Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching or listening to us from. This is the Niger FC podcast. As always, I'm your host, IoT, and I have with me my reliable co host, Midlai. Thanks for joining. Thank you very much for joining. Yes, we have another exciting one to talk about. Um, another week, another weekend of action. A lot has happened. Several Nigerian players were in action for their clubs. A lot of players had good weekends. Some players had poor weekends. And we're just here to give you a quick roundup of all the latest news. And of course, um, noteworthy performances um, that happened over the past week. Um, Smithlai, before we get into performances, let's just start the show by talking about something positive. Um, transfers. Um, the renowned, you know, reliable journalist Fabrizio Romano came out with a report that Super Eagles goalkeeper Stanley Umabali has been the subject of interest um, from Al Etifak in Saudi Arabia as well as Queen's Park Rangers in the English Championship. You know, um, of course, after Umabali's good showing at the AFCON, um, a lot of us expected some offers to be on the table for him. You know, there were expected there to be some interest. Um, but hearing these two teams, you know, one in Saudi and one in the second tier of English football, um, what's your reaction to the news? For me, um, you know, that is um, the beauty of playing for the national team. When he was doing well for Chippa United, I don't think um, people did not really observe what he did for Chippa United. Mm. When he was playing for Inba and Lobby with Kassina United, people did not really observe, notice what he actually did. Okay. That is the beauty of people national, and I'm really actually what happy for him. I know that there's going to be interest because uh, this Afcon had like two billion, you know, viewers around the world. Look at watching the Afcon, so I know there's going to be interest. Even there's still much more interest about you know um, Stanley Wabali. So for me, you know, I'm really really happy that uh, our first choice, you know, you know, it's been a long time we see a goalkeeper trying to move to a bigger club. They always go, you know, go down. I don't want to mention names now, but I'm happy that, uh, you know, things actually were working well for Stanley Wabali. I'm, I'm a very big fan of it. Mm. Well said, you know, and I mean, I, I'm very happy to see that he's getting interest as well. Um, but just to put it into context, um, we have QPR, you know, who are currently 19 in the English Championship, the second division of English football. Um, where, of course, we have a, a number of other players um, mm. that play in that league. And we have Al Etifak, who are currently eighth in the Saudi Pro League. You know, Al Etifak, um, coached by Liverpool legend um, Steven Gerrard. Um, if you were his agent, if you were his advisor, in this situation, which club would you ask him to lean um, more towards? I mean, English Championship is, you know, one of the tough um, second divisions in football. Um, you know, is England is a good country, is somewhere that potentially, you know, if he stays there for long enough, he can build his life after, you know, he's done playing, um, you know. And this is a land where I would say there's definitely more exposure. If he's playing in the championship and he does well, there's exposure potential to go into even other leagues, maybe the Premier League, who knows. Al Etifak, on the other hand, is the oil rich Saudi Arabia. You know, they'll probably pay him five times what QPR wants to pay him. He's going to be rubbing shoulders with players like Neymar, players like Cristiano Ronaldo. But there's also a good opportunity that if he goes there, other than Ego Straka, that will probably be posting him. Nobody is really going to pay attention to him anymore, except mm -hmm. when he comes to play for the national team. Yes. So, if you were his advisor, which club would you say he should be more you know, interested in? For me, you know, uh, you know, with uh, with due respect, I think um, it's going to be QPR, QPR, and I will say, you know, my reasons. You know, it's a destiny move because one, if he goes to QPR and perform well, you can even at QPR can even get pro, game promotion, the Premier League. Before you know it, he's now a Premier League goalkeeper. You can remind me when last. When did we have? We have never had any Nigerian goalkeeper in the Premier League before. Mm. When no Nigerian. Kali came in where they were. It was in championship. It was in championship. Yes. We've not had any Nigerian goalkeeper in the Premier League. Say, oh, this is the Premier League. No. I thought he was going to work for, but he joined work for when work for got relegated. Mm. But so I think he came and played one match in the Premier League. No? Who? 
He came in. One match in the Premier League? Yeah, he played one match in the Premier League. 11-12 season. 11-12 season. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that was before they actually was. The when he was that 11-12 season, he wasn't even a Nigerian international then. Hmm. Yeah, he was, um, you know, he became the guy international around 2005, 2015 or so. Then he's still a British. I'm talking about with the Nigerian passport. Mm. With the Nigerian passport, play nobody, no one. So, and apart from Andy Gakoye, if he comes and plays the Premier League, we will be having what, you know, um, one of our, you know, another player. That is can actually what play what's it called in the top five leagues in European football because that's a gateway to the to the Premier League. And another example is this: if you forgot, there was a goalkeeper, I think it was Nottingham Forest goalkeeper. Uh, I, I, I remember his name now, uh, Samba. You know when Nottingham Forest got promoted to the Premier League. You know he left. Because he did well in the championship, he left for RC Lens in France. Wow. Now, he's not the goalkeeper for France national team too. <laughs> Can you see? So, doing well in the championship, he got a move to, to France, RC Lens. They became second in the, what's it called? Second in the, in the Ligue 1, played the Champions League. Now, it's in the French national team. So, championship is not a small grant. So big boys too play in the championships too. And I'm talking about goalkeepers now. They yeah. play in the championship now. So I think that uh, for me, you consider that. Yeah. It's gonna be hard for a player from uh RT Fiat. I don't know that name I can't pronounce it properly. Apologies if I'm not uh I'm from Saudi Arabia, if they are listening to me, <laughs> apologies for that. It's gonna be very hard for players from that country to come and play in the mainstream European football. If you have yeah. not made your name before, like they don't know you before. It's going very hard. We know that uh, Jordan Anderson left the club to Ajax. But because what? People knew Anderson from his days with Liverpool. So for me, I think that uh, he's a young man and he'll be thinking about his family too. I think uh, QPR is, uh, is the best move for him mm. at the long run. Okay, uh, but let me let me ask you this question, and uh, just to to ask, you know, um, I also think that QPR is the better football move for sure. But life also plays a factor. Stanley Wabali is twenty seven years old. It's just now that he's coming into a little bit of limelight. Mm -hmm. So, if he goes to QPR, and maybe he doesn't do well, maybe they make him a second choice because they're not too impressed with him. It could be a fall for, from grace for him. And he might never reach the Premier League and reach the heights that we think that he potentially can get to. Mm -hmm. If he goes to Aleti Fak, he's going to make bank. <laughs> and his, his children will be good. His, I don't mm -hmm. know if he has a, a wife yet or whoever he marries will be good. So He's married. He's married. You know, so what do you say to that? Like... It's a risk if he goes to QPR because if things don't work out, things don't work out. At his 27 years old, you know, this might be, maybe he has one or two more transfers. But he goes to Saudi, is financially secured. You know, he played in Nigeria. We know they don't pay them fantastically in Nigeria. He moved to South Africa, but he's not, you know, he wasn't a big boy when he moved to South Africa. So I'm sure they're not paying him a big boy salary over there. This might be his last chance to get a payday. What do you think? Goalkeeper, they are not football players. They are not outfit players. Mm. They age like fine wine. And I can tell you, Stanley Wabili still have a um, lot of years ahead of him to do well. So a lot of people don't know that because maybe because of his physique, he started football very early. If you look at his formative years, you know, when he was with Ejiba, for me, if he didn't even work out, work out well in England, but we saw the man to now, he went oh. to Italy. But if he didn't work out well in Saudi Arabia, you are going to Nigeria. <laughs> you are going to Nigeria. If he didn't work out well in Saudi Arabia, or you are going to Kuwait, or, uh, or <laughs> if he didn't work out well in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you know, you see, you know, you can still get a second chance, even in League One. 
in England around. But if it didn't work out well in the other Saudi Arabia club, ah, no, 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 no. They are going to Tanzanian League. <laughs> That's my that's actually my chance on on that. So I, I think England should be the best bet for him. Okay. Okay. Um very well said. Um we wish him the best of luck, whichever decision he chooses to take. Of course, we'll be watching and we will be supporting him. Um let's now transition to the weekend. You know, lots of Nigerian footballers in action over the past weekend. We can't talk about everyone, but we'll just pick, you know, a few of them to highlight different, some positive, some negative. Um, let's start with somewhat of a negative. Um, and I mean, this is also depending on who you ask. But I want to ask you about Gif Urban. And I, I'm happy to ask you this question because I remember you were a very big fan of Gif Urban. I know even when we did an episode um, when he was being linked with Spurs in the Premier League, he spoke about the quality that he has and how he was banging goals. But after making his move to Lyon in January, Things have not been smooth sailing for Gift Urban, to put it nicely. You know, some games he's been on the bench and some games he has started and they sub him off because he's not doing anything. There was even one game they yanked him off at halftime. Um, he scored one goal for them in the Coupe de France, you know, in a 2-1 victory over Lille. But other than that, he has not really provided much and I've watched some of his matches. In fact, in the game against Mets, he was horrible. You know, I finished that game with like a 5.9 rating, you know. Um, so do you think this is just the learning process for him? This is the transition stage. Or should people start to get worried about Gift Urban's form? What do you think? For me, you know, uh, people will think with a minute's comment that uh, maybe because um, I like the player. But I will say this. It's difficult for you to not to have precision with the team, oh. and you just come there and you know and do well. Especially, I you know if you are not, it's not really experience. Come on, you just had um, you know two seasons in the European. I will not say big league. I would just say me big league. Is someone that has not really reached his peak yet, oh. but because of his level of achieve- achievement, a lot of people really expected a lot from him. So, see, Gift Urban is not an international yet. Gift Urban will learn. And this Leon team eh, is also a work in progress. See, this Leon team is um, a team that have been struggling from relegation. Now they brought in few players just to save their face. It's next season that you will see this Leon team kick in. And if this Leon team can kick in, because it's so hard for for you to play in a team that is even playing poorly. Because sometimes too, you know, they are not doing anything sometimes. Oh. So, for me, if you play in the preseason and you still not sure adapt well, I think that, um, you know, Git Urban will still come good. That is my own personal opinion about him. I think that he's a guy that will come good. Just wait, just give him a little bit more time. This is about to end. Let him go for preseason with Leon. Come back, you will see that uh, it's going to be a different gift over. Don't forget that uh, you know he's not even spent too long, too long in Europe, and just coming from fighting with giants, RC giants, and everything. So let him just relax, and you know, season next is going to be better for him. You know, half season transfer is uh, for me. Ah, uh, yeah, it's more. Okay, well said. Um, let's not panic yet. You know, for me. I would have liked to see him, obviously, you know, light things up in France. Um, but like you said, you know, fair points. He came in in the middle of the season. You know, um, the Lyon team is still trying to get, um, you know, their their team together. Even though their form has improved a lot recently since they made some January transfers. Um, but he's still trying to get his feet wet and learn the lay of the land. Hopefully, he's able to bang in a few before the season ends. Um, and, you know, he doesn't just finish with... Um, you know, a, a below par um, time with them. Um, okay, let us move on to. I'll take Frank Onyeka. You know, Frank Onyeka, fantastic for Nigeria at the Afcon, and since returning for the Afcon, he was on the bench in their first game. You know, against um, Liverpool, and then he has had I think three consecutive starts since then. This past weekend, he played against Chelsea, um, and he got an assist. I mean, 
an assist is an assist, but it's not like he created the goal or he did, you know, he touched the ball, the ball went in the air, and then Johan Wissa did 95 or 99% of the work. But it was an assist. Um, but for me, I think the key thing that I want to really talk about is the fact that he has now started getting starts. You know, Onyeka was a bench boy for Brentford before, but now he's been getting starts. And he's been doing well. He also had a fantastic game in previous week against Manchester City. Chelsea game, first half was shaky, you know, and then second half when Brentford came into life, Onyeka was one of the players that really helped them to end that draw. Um, so what do you have to say very quickly about Frank Onyeka, his game time since the AFCON and the game against Chelsea? I'll just, you know, say something about uh, how we... This is what the national team can do for you. Mm. This is what, when you now have uh, at the back of your mind that you can win any game. That is what winning can do for you. Mm. Frank Onyeka won, was part of the team that won like four games in a row. I'm not really sure when Brentford won, won four games or five games in a row. <laughs> I don't know when. So it was part of the team that did that. So at, at, at the highest level, that is what national team can do for you. Even apart from that, if you look at uh, Kevin Bassi too and Alex Iwobi, look at what they actually were doing for their clubs too now. You realize that uh, this is what national team can actually do for you. It gives them this word, this extra confidence. Mm. And I think that uh, now, they now believe more in Frank Onyeka. We all know he's a good player. Now they believe more in him. He's now fearless. For me, I, I think that it was pure injustice that Frank Onyeka was not part of the team of the tournament. Mm. He did better than those that he actually was put there. So uh, I'm happy for him and I want him to continue. You know, There have been links that he should, he should go to Middlesbrough before, but now... And not much people anymore. A lot of people actually was will be will be yeah. vying for a signature if a bread for decide to sell. So I'm really really happy for him. I think that is because of the nationality. No, well, well said. You know, um, I also think that his performances for the national team at the Afcon has definitely given his coach Thomas Frank more to think about, and has seen that he can rely on him a bit more. Um, you know, the one thing that I would say be, that he's still lacking in his game, which to be fair, a lot of DMs tend to lack this, you know, it's just his ability in the final third. You know, even like you said, even though he got an assist, it wasn't really like an assist that he created. You know, he's an assist because Nain touched the ball last before the goal. Um, but, you know, he has a few times that he gets the ball in and around the box and either his decision making is bad or he just takes a bad shot or he makes a bad pass. I wouldn't say he cannot improve on that because we've seen several players improve on that. In fact, we've seen Ndidi improve on that this season as well, playing for Leicester. So I think it's just something that he needs more practice, more match action, and, you know, hopefully he's able to improve that part of his game. If he does improve that part of his game, I think he's going to turn into, you know, what people would like to call a complete midfielder. So um, hopefully he can pick up on that and, you know, kudos to him on his performance um, this past weekend. Um, I'll jump over quickly um, to Belgium. Chidera Ejuke. After, you know, making his move to Russia, the situation in Russia, Ukraine, the war started. FIFA opened up the portal for players to make the move they wanted to. He went to Hertha Berlin in Germany. Things didn't go quite well. He got injured. You know, he got relegated with Hertha Berlin. And then he made, he made the move to Belgium to join Alassane Yusuf at Royal Antwerp. And things have kind of turned, you know, I don't know if he's 180. I won't say 360 because 360 is a full circle. Now back to where he starts. But things have turned 180 for him. And he has been getting a good run of games. And he has been impressive for Real Antwerp, especially in the past few weeks. If you go on their social media page now, after every match, they're going to post one or two videos of who um, educate dribble come out for field. You know? And in this their game this past weekend, he had a goal and an assist in their 3-0 victory. Um, this now raises the question. I've been seeing the comments on our social media. Should Chidera Ejuke get another look with the Super Eagles? What do you think, Smidlai? So I, I, I just think that uh, he's a player that uh, would have been so useful for Nigeria in this, um, in this AFCON, especially mm -hmm. because uh, I think what we lack 
then in this Afcon, it's actually was a direct winger. Mm. Someone that would hold the ball and would take you on directly. You know, Lukma is more of the inverted one that uh, you want to do this because uh, what's it called combination play. Not a guy that with this flagoyan style of football, you know, this um <laughs> this champagne style of football, these fancy ones. The uh Simon too is the hard working type, you know. But this guy is a proper winger. You know, he's going to come at you. So, you know, it's similar to like Simon and Jenga, you know, similar in a similar way. I think we missed him. And you know, kudos to him. When he played the first game for Royal Antwerp, I watched the game. The commentator said that uh, he doesn't look like somebody played for Nigeria. <laughs> that was what he said. So <laughs> in that day, I was okay. no, no, no. He doesn't look like someone that has uh, played Neil Scott before. No, no. This is not. That's what. And now it's not. It's very hard for players to get a chance. This is now the second. This is the reborn. Chidera Juke now. And yeah. kudos to him too. You know, uh, maybe he's been inspired by you know his friend. Uh, Victor Bodiface, I know because I know that they are, they are very good uh, friends. And that through your show, when you were interview, you interviewed um, a UK, he asked you to David Boniface, oh, a good guy, oh, a funny guy. Oh, I remember that day. So, <laughs> so you know, it's, it'd be good to have Boniface and a uh, UK national team together, so we can see the banters very well. Mm. So I, I would like him to have a second look. I would like them to give, give him a second look. Yeah. No, yeah, and I, I mean. I think it would be hypocritical of me not to say that I would like to see him back with the Super Eagles. I'm on record. And I, I really hope that he doesn't make a fool out of me. Because I've said this before. When I watched Eduke back then, before he became known, before Nigerians really started knowing who he was, I was following his journey. And I said it on one of my live programs, that this boy is the most exciting Nigeria player since JJ Okoja. People said, ah... Eagle strike, I don't come. Oh, this one, that one, that one, that one. And like you rightly said, for the Nigerians that want that flamboyant football, that want that champagne football, that just want somebody that can dribble till the day ends, Chidera Eduke is that guy. Mm-hmm. The one thing that sometimes people feel like he, you know, he lacks is that cutting edge. Sometimes people think, oh, yeah, oh, yeah the dribble don't do now. Now find pass. You know, now do something with it. But Shidera Eduke is a quality talent. I don't think anybody can can take that away from him. You know, he reminds me of, and I don't know if I should say he reminds me of, because he might even be older than him, um, Jeremy Doku. Mm-hmm. You know, he's one of those guys that he can take on anybody. He can skill, you know, day in, day out. And mm-hmm. he can create chances. He just needs to find the right moment to whip in the cross the right moment to play the pass and not get carried away with the dribbling that he has going on. Um, so I would like to see Chidera Eduke mm-hmm. get another shot in the national team. Let us see what he can do. Of course, competition for places is so high, especially uh, as a winger. But I believe that the boy has a lot of talent and he can potentially be, you know, even if not a starter, um, he can be a key option for us. Imagine in the 75th minute when legs are mm-hmm. tired, you bring Eduke to come and play with the fullback. You know, I think that's where he can potentially be a crucial player for us. So kudos mm-hmm. to Chidera Eduke. Congratulations on your goal and assist this past weekend. And long may it continue. I hope that, you know, they win. I think they're in the cup final now. So hopefully they are able to win the cup. And they're not doing too well in the league. But if they can con- compete to retain their title, who knows? It could be a fantastic one for him. Um, And let's just wrap up quickly. I'll take two more players um, and then I'll shout out some other players. Um, Ademola Lukman was on target for Atalanta, his first goal since the AFCON. You know, welcome mm-hmm. back to Atalanta, welcome back on the score sheet. Um, unfortunately, they lost that game 2-1. Um, I watched the match. Lukman mm-hmm. had a decent game. His goal was mm-hmm. not, you know, a, fa- a fantastic goal. Ball fell for him in the box. He had quick reactions. He put it in. Um, but, of course, Atalanta fans are happy to see Lukman back on the score sheet. And I'm sure that he's also happy to get running again in Italian Serie A. Um, what do you think about Ademola Lukman? I think currently he's tied um, on goals, or maybe he's one behind Victor Osime um, for Serie A goals this season. What do you think about Ademola Lukman? So for me, I think yeah, Victor Osime is like two or three goals ahead of him. So mm. I think it was two or three goals ahead of him because uh, what, no, mm-hmm. I, I watched the game against uh, Bologna and um, that game had more... There's a lot at stake in that game <laughs> because um, 
if they could beat Bologna in that game, they would be fought, you know, in the Champions League spot. So there was a love. But Hadi, you know, kudos to the Bologna team. They are very well improved side. Unfortunately, the two of our players that used to be there before, like Kingsley Michael and um, Ojo Okonko, are no longer with them again, which is sad. But, you know, I, I saw him playing. He, you know, he, he was there for, for 90 minutes. Uh, you know, he had a good game. I would say he had a good game, but it's just that uh, the Bologna team were just up for it. You know, it's a game of two halves. The Atlanta team do, do, was it, dominated the, the first half, uh, Bologna, the second half. So, but, you know, it's just back. I think it's back from injury because uh, and the Gasparini said that I think he was slightly injured at the half con. You know, that's what half con can also do to you, too. So, I think Lukman will be back to his best. But I don't. I think I don't see Lukman staying beyond this, this, uh, this season in Atlanta. I think uh, a move might be, might be somewhere waiting for Lukman. I think mm-hmm. um, Lukman will probably actually what leave. So, but yeah. good game, good game. I saw, I saw it on individual points. Good game for Lukman. But I yeah. see as a team, I don't think Atlanta had a very good game overall. Yeah. Um. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. You're right. Um, Osima is three goals ahead of. Um, Ahead of Adam Malik, man, I forgot that Osimhen recently just scored a hat trick. Um, you mm-hmm. know, so Osimhen is three goals ahead of Adam Malik, man. Um, as this midfielder is giving me a hint, if we want to talk about him, we can we can touch on that very quickly. Um, okay, switching over to Belgium, Tolu Arokudare, um, playing for KRC Genk. Um, he missed the penalty mm-hmm. in Genk's game, you know, and unfortunately they ended up losing the game three 0 against fellow Nigerian Rafael Oedika and um, Club Brugger. Um, and he was subject of racist abuse. Um, I didn't really want to talk about this before because this is something that we see time and time and time again in football and nothing really changes. You know, in a, I say rather, a black player makes an error or misses an opportunity, you know, misses a penalty, and then all the racists start coming out. The people that claim to be fans, the people that claim to love you when you score goals, they start coming out and they make all sorts of statements. Um, I don't think there's any point. Maybe there is a point, you know, forgive me, um, of talking about oh, racism is wrong. Um, racism has to stop. I think we all know these things. Um, for me, I think it was just a shame that something like that happened. I saw that he posted, oh, he's black and proud, you know. So I don't think he's letting it get to him too much. These are obviously clowns on social media, you know, people that cannot, that cannot say it with their chest. They have to hide behind fake accounts and things like that to make these kinds of comments. And of course, I think the overarching thing is that at the end of the day, it just makes you remember that, you know, you are a black man playing in a white man's country and these things can always happen to you when something doesn't go your way. Um, but yeah, Smidlai, your thoughts on that? What do you want to say about that? You also to say that uh, this thing in, in 2024, this thing should not have a place in football. Yeah. This issue not actually what have a place in football. I think FIFA or these FAs are not really doing enough. I think if you partner with um, all these social media companies and everything, I think they can take these abuse out. That's my opinion. I think that we just need to put more efforts to this thing because football is football. Even the best player in the world can miss penalty. So, I don't know why people still live with that mentality that a penalty, you know? So, this thing, ha- there's no place for racism in football. I think FIFA can actually will do more. And also, you, know, you can't educate them again now. Proper ban is what they actually would need. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, and to end on, I, I, sadly, we're going to end on another negative note. Um, but, Victor Osime, Nigeria star boy. Unfortunately, he missed the penalty um, in Napoli's 2-1 victory over Juventus. Um, fortunately for him, though, once he missed the penalty, they were able to tap in and score the rebound. I don't know if I should call that a tap in, you know, because it was quite a fine finish mm-hmm. from the rebound. But they scored from the rebound. Napoli won the game 2-1. If, if they hadn't scored that um, rebound, Ozime and Arokodari might have been facing the same thing this past weekend because we know how things are in that in that side as well. Um, but mm-hmm. I think the interesting part for me was the reaction of Nigerian fans to Ozime's penalty miss. 
Some people mm-hmm. said, hey, now nah, he ain't win the penalty now, so it doesn't matter. He said the one that got them the points. Some people say, well, it's from the rebound that they scored. So Osime still gets an assist for that. And somebody said, oh, you're just wicked. That Why is that what you are talking about? Uh, you know? And I, I find it funny because I understand how fandom is. I understand that people love a player. But I always tell them, unfortunately or fortunately, my job is to be objective when I'm talking about these players, when I'm reporting the information. Um, and the reality of it is that Victor Osimhen needs to improve on his penalty kicks. You know, we love him. We all love him. We're all Nigerians. We know how good he is. We know the superstar that he is. But he needs to improve on his penalty kicks. Mm-hmm. For Napoli, he has missed four penalties and he has scored four penalties. If we're talking about shots, 50% conversion rate is a fantastic conversion rate. Mm-hmm. But penalties, to only score 50% of penalties is not good at all. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when he doesn't take pens, people will say, ah, why is he not taking penalty? You know, he needs to be more confident. He needs to be this, that. Sometimes Nigerian fans will even insult his team that they are jealous of him. That's why they're not allowed to take the penalty. But then if he misses as much as he scores, then there is a clear reason why he's not taking these penalties. The one against Juventus, with all due respect to Victor Osime, was a poor penalty. I'm sure even he knows that it was a poor penalty, you know. And in a crucial match like that, in a crucial time like that, he needs to be able to step up and convert these things. You know, um, it's, there are certain players that when they step up to the penalty spot, it's never a question. Of course, no one is going to score every single penalty. Let's be realistic. No one. All the best players miss. Messi misses, Ronaldo misses sometimes. But you have to have a high conversion rate from the spot. It is one kick of a ball, nine yards out, you and the goalkeeper. You cannot be missing 50% of your penalties for your club. It's just not right. Um, but yeah, Smith, like, what, what do you think about that? So Simeon's penalty miss and the way people reacted to it. For me, I, I, I think, like you also said there too, he needs to actually work, uh, you know, work on his penalty because that's my own personal opinion. You know, you know, I don't know if you normally see this uh, visual, normally show before you take a penalty. Mm. Imagine seeing so many red and green, you know, uh, mm. eight, you know, four, four, green and red, you know. He doesn't show that, um, you know, that's actually what good that is. Like, I think he needs to work on that, work on his free kick for him to actually what, you know, become like, you know, a better player, like a drug bar that you actually what we want him to actually what become. Mm. And if you look at the game against South Africa too, you know, um, if the coach, I think, I don't know why they took him off like that, but I know that he was very tired. But sometimes it's too, if he's like your best penalty taker, you will look for a way to keep to him, keep on, the him pitch, on the field. On the mm. pitch. So that, uh, you know, he can actually well, be able to be, you know, take penalties. So I think you just need to work on that. And I'm, 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 I know that says go take this on a challenge and, and work on that. So that's my opinion, yes. And um, yes. I would say for all the Nigerian fans, um, no, we don't hate Victor Osime. We love him just as much as you do, you know, but we have to be objective when speaking. It is something that is currently a flaw in his game, a kink in his armor. I'll put it like that. And I think he just needs to strengthen that armor a little bit. I'm not even going to go as far as saying he needs to be able to take free kicks. Free kicks, you know, that one is a different technique altogether. But one-on-one with the goalkeeper, dead ball, nine yards out. I think any quality striker needs to be able to score penalties at a very, very high rate. You know, you should be missing one out of ten penalties or or max two out of ten. That's how clinical you must be from the sport. You know, so for Mm -hmm. him, I checked it. His Napoli record so far is four penalties scored, four penalties missed. I don't think that's good enough for a player of Victor Osimhen's caliber. Um, And just to round up, I'll just also give a shout out to different players that did well over the past weekend. Um, Daniel Akpey was in action for his club, Morocco Swallows, in South Africa. Kept a clean sheet, made three good saves. Um, Calvin Bassi also had a good game for Fulham. Omeru had a good game for Kashim Pasa. Um, Oli Sanda had a good game for Orlando Pirates. Dwight Osai Samo scored a goal, kept a clean sheet, had a good game for Fenerbahce. Um, Tochuku Nadi had a good game for Zolta Waragem in Belgium. Um, Hamza Tojediron 
had a good game, created three chances for um, DVSC in Hungary. Um, Aribo scored a late winner for Southampton. You know, good one for him. Happy for him with that. Ibrahim Olawoyin had a good game playing for KK Rizespor in Turkey. Alassane Yusuf, you know, also had a good game alongside Chidera Eduke for Royal Antwerp. Ifan Imatiu scored a goal, had a good game for FC Zurich in Switzerland. Ibrahim Aliyu was on target um, for Houston Dynamo in the MLS. Um, Alex Iwobi had a decent game, created three chances for Fulham. Um, Ibrahim Said made an assist and had a good game for Viborg in, um, I forget the country, I think is Norway. Um, Ola Kunle Olushegun scored a goal for FC Krasnodar in Russia. Um, and then just before the weekend, Odion Igalo scored two goals for Aweda in Saudi. Chisom Egutulam also scored two goals for Hata FC. Um, so shout out to all the various Nigerian players who had good matches and were on target over the past weekend. Um, Smitlai, any final word before we end this episode? No, for me, you know, I, I child to those that went to the AFCON and those that don't even go to the AFCON, I realized that uh, those that went to the AFCON, they did not just stop there. They actually what, you know, moving and, you know, progressing well for their clubs. That is actually what's very good. And also those that, um, you know, that don't go to the AFCON, and that it's going to be what competition for places too with the national team. So I'm happy with the way we actually were performing, and I think that uh, Syria now is now becoming like a mecca for Nigerian football, not the Premier League again. You know, the Syria. I'm watching more Syria games now because um, you know I'm likely to see one or two Nigerians in action. So you know, good, good game, good weekend for Nigeria. I hope that it can actually continue next uh, next weekend. But unfortunately. Few of our players are playing in Europe, you know. So, I still wish them best of luck to you. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Smidlai. Thank you for everyone that has watched or listened to us on the various platforms. Um, as always, my name is IoT, and my co host is Smidlai. Thanks for joining. Yes, this has been the Niger FC podcast. Bye bye, guys. <laughs>